Hey, this is King Firehawk from 1640 PWPR. Coming up, the Blind Tag Podcast, which is exclusive here to 1640 PWPR, the home of Pro Wrestling Podcast Radio and more. out there in the podcast world once again you've reached the blind tag i am big dick giddy and your host alongside two members of the fallen angels naturally we have crim hey and we have dante hey and today we do have a lot to cover it's going to be sort of a, a sensitive show but we're going to start off with the minor stuff at first minor leagues um the minor stuff starting off with raw uh, not exactly the most memorable Yawn. show in the Yeah. And I mean, after last week's, I mean, like, the one right after SummerSlam was like, yeah! Yeah. And then you and I are sitting there, I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe it's a little after night. He's like, what? It's only been an yeah. hour? It this feels like forever. Yeah, it took forever. It but, was. Well, you know, I do remember that the, the Beat the Clock Challenge with the ladies was great. That was good. No. It, 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 it was well, good. Hold on, hold on. I didn't say great. I said good. I, say, I said it was great. It was a great idea because it would, they, but they didn't give them enough time. You had Becky Lynch with Foxy, which which doesn't make which any goddamn sense. Which was what two sense. and a half two and a yeah, half minutes. Was, that was two and a half minutes of Becky dragging fucking Foxy around the ring. Oh. True, and then then you had a better match with Charlotte and 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 uh, and Bree, right? But that was only like two minutes. Well, yeah, they had, they had to beat the the yeah. preset time, and then you had the possible. Really great, possibly could outshine the main event, which was Paige versus Sasha Banks. And let's bury that match quick. <clears throat> yeah, and, and then yeah, within, within a minute, uh, within a minute, because they had to beat the clock. It was terrible. Like, how do you get like you have Sasha Banks and you have Paige, and you give them a minute and a half? Yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my fucking life. Yeah, why would you ever want to come up to the main roster if you're a woman? Don't know. Why? If I'm Bailey, I'm like, don't fucking send me up there. <laughs> like, four horsewomen, awesome. I, I love you guys, but I'm staying right where I fucking am. Yeah. No, why? I don't understand why you would go. It's fucking terrible. It's fuck. It's it, it's not right because it, it's like you see you you see the what these women are capable of right. in NXT, and they just. Eh, they get buried when they come to the fucking the regular roster, and they, you know they want them to be catty like fucking total divas and shit like that. And someone needs to fucking let Vince know no one gives a fuck about that fucking nonsense. They should just rename Total Divas the Bella Show because that's really what it's for. Ridiculous. Yeah, I just anyway. And you know what would have been great? You know, it would have been it would have been great if uh, if Sasha. Banks had won that match in a less amount of time, making her making the, her a candidate, making yeah. her the number one contender. Yeah. she beat the clock. It would have been it would have been a good idea. Well, we know where those go. They go in the good idea bin, which goes in the ocean. We, we put that in the ocean. <sighs> anyway, um, but one other interesting tidbit that we did learn is that well, while Rollins will be defending the heavyweight championship at Night of Champions against Sting. He will also have to defend the U.S. Championship against Cena, who's, who demanded his rematch. What a twist! Yeah. Oh, no, that's crazy. Um, honestly, I could see this going a number of ways. I mean, Cena's going to go over. He's going to go over for the U.S. Championship. Well, let's see what happens after uh, what happened. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. Well, but, well, that leads into what we were about to talk about. But... Um, you know the the so Cena hurt himself in a live event. Uh, he was he was wrestling Kevin Owens um, in a street fight, 
and went for the inverted sunset flip uh, slam, essentially. Yeah, yeah like the, the, they, they call it the infrared sunset flip powerbomb. Yeah, which is neat. wordy. It, very wordy, but very, very neat. And um, the... The whole idea is that you know you, you flip over and sort of like a standing flip. It looks really cool when it when it gets nailed, but unfortunately, it, it was a fuck up on both parts. Yeah, like you, you said, could, you know, Kevin Owens couldn't get him hooked, and and you, you know. could, once you get so sweaty in a match, there's only so much you could do to hold on to your opponent. And if you watch Cena in it, he's kind of wiggling yeah. to try to get out of the move, which made him cause Owens to not hold him as tightly as he should. Yeah. But stuff like that happens in the Indies all the time. It's nobody's fault. It's just one of those freakish, stupid things that happen. Yeah. And that's why wrestling's real, people. Yeah. <laughs> this shit is real, It's man. real, man. Um, you know, I, hopefully he's okay. I, I know he finished the match. I know he even went through a table afterwards. Um, but I hope, you know, I hope he's okay. You know, I, I don't want him to hurt himself or anything like that. And... Hopefully that it, it's just like a stinger or something like that that he got in his neck. You see what you did there? Ah! Ow! All right. Um, but you know, enough of the minor stuff. We might as well get into the the stuff that actually matters. Which really, there's only one story that matters to us this week. Um, I just gotta say, like, it's been a crazy summer for wrestling. It really has. A couple people die. You know, you know. There's a Chris Benoit room that sweeps away legends. Well, yeah. Uh, Hogan drops the N word. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and, now, and now as we lead into the very sad. Yeah. So basically, situation. on Tuesday, uh, Jimmy F- Superfly Snuka, who's seventy-two years old by the way, uh, was charged with third-degree murder and voluntary manslaughter um, after a Lehigh County grand jury determined he repeatedly assaulted Argento um, or Nancy Ar- Argentino in uh, May of nineteen eighty-three in a motel and left her in the bed to die, which is. That's genuinely incorrect. Um, that is not what happened in yeah. that hotel room, and I know it from the man's mouth myself. Um, but, uh, you know, basically, the grand jury decided to indict on these charges. This does not, does not mean that he is convicted of anything. Yeah, let, let's make that a clear again to the WWE. Mm-hmm. Let's make this very, very clear. An indictment does not mean guilty. But, you know, Vince very quickly was, uh, a, you know, he, he took... Jimmy off the Legends page. He is no longer has his Legends contract. Yeah. Uh, he's been removed from everything WWE. You know, the back of the man that WWE and Vince built their company on. Back in 83 when this incident happened, Jimmy was the top guy. Yeah. He was the man. Yeah. Nobody could beat Snuka. You know, yeah. he was the man. You know, I, well, here's the thing. I, I, I mean, they basically wiped the most famous wrestler off the planet history just for dropping the end bomb yeah and you know yeah that's, that's it's not surprising that if one of their legends gets accused of murder that they wipe him from the that's not surprising to me i mean see, that, see, that, that's, that's the other thing that's really pissing me the fuck off about this whole goddamn thing it's not he wasn't charged with just third degree murder he was also charged with involuntary manslaughter yeah. why do we keep forgetting that part because that's the part he might get be guilty of. of I don't know but from what happened from what I was told of what happened on that day is the same story that he has told every single person that has ever asked him what happened on that day mm-hmm. which was they were driving to a show they stopped on the side of the road yeah he got out of the car she insisted on getting out of the car too she slipped I don't know whether he playfully pushed I don't know because we never went into detail other than that she she fell down mm. this ravine and hit her head. He got her up out of the ravine. They drove to the hotel. Once they got to the hotel, he's like, how are you feeling? Do you want to come to the show with me? She's like, no, I think I'm going to stay behind. He goes to the show, does the show. Now, if anybody knows wrestling history, cocaine and drinking were the two biggest things back in that day in 1983. In, the, in, the, in those days. Mm-hmm. So everybody was doing it. So after a show, everybody would go out and party and drink and do whatever. He eventually comes back to the hotel room to find her dead in the bathtub. The bra freaked and destroyed the hotel room because he couldn't handle, in his drunken and coked haze, how to handle the situation. 
Jimmy is a very naive man. He is a child in a grown man's body. If anybody who knows him knows this to be fact. Um, but anyway, the cops came in. They deemed it an accidental death because she drowned in the tub. That's what happened. She fell asleep, which is the one thing you never do if you have a concussion. And she drowned in the tub. Yeah. End of story. I understand that the family is hurt and that they won um, a civil suit against Snuka back in 84. I don't know whatever happened with that because um, that was never it, talked it, about. It, well, it was a civil suit that um, they, they basically, obviously, well, civil so, sued Jimmy for, I think it was 500000 500000 And he could not pay it because he was essentially penniless. Yeah, penniless because his, his ex-wife took him uh, for every uh, dime he, that he had. Yeah, he, he was essentially you know penniless at the time. He, here's the thing, okay? And as much as, um, y- you know, in my mind, everybody is innocent until they're fucking proven guilty. That's that's the period paragraph in the sentence. That's the way it fucking works in this country, and that's the way it should always work, okay? But at the end of the day, no one, not anybody sitting at this table, not anybody that's lived with Jimmy, not even his children, knows what happened except for Jimmy and Nancy. Nobody knows what happened except Jimmy and Nancy. And you know what the sad part is? At this time, 32 years later, after everything was said and done, because they're going off of some quotes that he put in a book that was starting to be written in 2010, because they're actually wrong in some of these reports that the book was out in 2012. He wrote the book in 2010. When I was taking care of Jimmy, you could see his mind was starting to slip a little bit. Back then, and that was in the, the late... 1990s, early 2000s, okay? The man has had so many concussions at this point. What the fuck do you think he's going to remember about the day other than what he has kept repeating well, to everybody, yeah, which the, is the story that I just relayed? The the New York Daily News is actually reporting that um, his lawyer is starting to argue that oh, he, yeah. he, he is unfit uh, to stand here, trial. <laughs> I have been visiting Jimmy... Almost every week for the last couple of months, except for the last month, because he's been severely, very, very, very sick with stomach cancer, which I'm sure everybody now knows. The man has a feeding tube in his stomach. There's days where it's difficult to get him to eat. This stuff is going to either put him in the grave, or the trial is just going to be such a stress on him, he's he's not going to make it through. And that's the heartbreaking part. Let's go after a 72-year-old man who's got cancer and possibly dying from it, yeah. and make him stressed out even more over a 32-year-old cold case, which was not a cold case because it was originally closed as an accidental death. Which makes me wonder where this uh, medical report came from that that, all, that it was yeah. declared a homicide. Or but, at least... if you, but if you go back and you read the medical report, because I know how I know medical stuff because of my mom, and you know I read murder books like crazy. I watch First Forty Eight. I've got a friend who works in homicide for the, for the Baltimore Police Department. Okay, mm-hmm. and if you look and read that autopsy report, and you read the injuries, it all coincides with a fall down a hill, scrapes, bruises, and well, then oh, absolutely a I'm, hit to the head with a stationary object. Yeah. It's called slamming your head on a fucking rock. Here's the thing. I, I, you're absolutely correct, okay? But those injuries can also be explained another way. I'm not saying that... I grew up with domestic violence. Okay. Okay? And I've never seen my mom ever have a scratch from a fucking... I mean, uh, uh, I've seen bruises, but I've never seen a scratch because she had it from head to toe. Her knees, her legs, her arms. You don't get scratches like that if you're being beaten. Which also coincides with the entire entire hotel room being trashed. I understand he explained that he freaked out, okay? What I'm saying, there is another explanation. That's what they're trying to present. there was another person around at that time during that situation. And and, uh, I will keep that person's name quiet because it's not my place to say. But there was another big name wrestler who was there for the event Mm -hmm. of the aftermath. Um, there, what else was it? Cause the other reason why I believe this has come forward is because the current district attorney is up for re-election. So let's go, go after this big guy, this big name wrestler for something that happened 32 years ago, a dying fucking man who has cancer. Yeah. 
To prove what? So you can get reelected because you put a, a put a name from the WWE in prison? Yeah. Go fuck yourself, dude. Really. This is a witch hunt for no reason. And and it's not fair to her family to dredge all this up thirty two years later. Do you think they really want to deal with this again 32 years later? Because I tell you, if it was my family member, well, I de- wouldn't want it. The dead woman's sisters apparently pushed for, for the district well, attorney to do you know, this. Well, again, there's some people who just can't let shit go. But again, I put my condolences what, what si- to the what family. What sibling could? What sibling could? I, if someone were to murder my brother or, or my sister, I'm going to let you know. I would, I would rip yeah, well, down the sky. You just said murdered. Jimmy well, didn't murder and I'm According gonna defend, to us, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, to the day I die. Jimmy did not murder that woman. Okay, I, I look, it was I'm a not, very unfortunate, know. sad situation and accident. But you, he he may have had yes. There's there's reports that there was some domestic violence between him and her. Yeah, there, I think okay. it was three months but earlier. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that he did it. No, no, that, and that, 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 that I'm not saying it does. Where they originally found that it was an accidental death. Should have stayed that way. But because he made certain quotes in a book when he was already starting into his dementia, we're going to take that as law? We're going to take that as God's word? Are you really serious? Once they try to ask him, here, here's a fine example because his, even his lawyer backs it up. Jimmy will say yes and nod to anything. Yes. He would even, if you asked him, did you kill Kennedy, he yeah. would say yes. Yeah. Because that's Jimmy. Here's another fine example. Back in the day when me and... Strangler were taking care of Jimmy, and it was towards the end where his asshole fucktard son took over everything. Um, they brought Jimmy onto the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. And they were asking Jimmy all these questions, and then the question is like, what do you think of pedophiles, Jimmy? And Jimmy's like, oh, they're okay, yeah. Because the guy didn't know what the word pedophile meant, mm-hmm. and they made a joke of it because he didn't understand them or what they were asking him. Yeah. Okay? And that was... When was the Opie and Anthony thing? That was like... Uh, Early 2000s. 2002, 2003. That's when that happened. Our, okay? Uh, I go and visit him, and there's times where I walk in, and he'll recognize Strangler right away, but he looks at me, kind of confused for a little while, and then the light comes on, and you know he recognizes you. Yeah. I mean, when, when, uh, when uh, cancer would come down with us... Jimmy didn't remember him from visit to visit. Yeah. It would always be this strange guy sitting on the couch. Yeah. You know, and it, this was somebody he lived with when we when we all lived together. Yeah. So, yeah, put him on the stand and see what you're going to get out of him. Oh, I, in, in my opinion, he is, he's he is not gonna, fit. He's, he's not, not going to make it to the stand. That's yeah, the yeah, thing. He, he's not fit to aid his own, his own, in his own defense. No. That, I, I absolutely believe that. Any competent defense attorney will not put him on the stand. No. His, well, they can't. If you can see, his, his attorney's been going public, going, yeah. why are you going after this yeah. man? It's, it's, you, you, it's, it is the most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah. And again, I... I I heartfully and truly feel very, very sorry, and I know the pain of losing somebody due to murder or something very tragic like this, but there is a time where you need to just move on. You cannot hold on to this anger for the rest of your life, because all it does is bring you down and kill you along with it. And you ju- it needs to be the whole thing just needs to be go it needs to go away and I, I I'm sorry I'm stuttering my words and stuff but well, I'm very emotional and very excited. passionate you, about you, it you're, no you're, you're I'm heated. not excited you know he, I mean I've I've cried for fucking days over this this man is a father to me I know this is which excited. is why I'm with, I know he's a father figure which is why you're incapable of being impartial this is what I'm saying okay I understand. Uh, you know what? And I'll be the first one to say, he deserves the benefit of the doubt. I'm more than willing to get it. You are innocent until proven guilty in this country. Period. But it's disgusting that WWE all of a sudden goes, you're done. Well, they're for a every, corporation. For everything they're, they're, that you've done. Yeah, yeah but what about all the shit that Vince has done? Look at, look at Hogan. Why don't we, you're not going to get Vince. Vince. That's look at what they did with Hogan. Hogan... Hogan you want to talk built about somebody WWE. built WWE? Okay. okay. Hogan built WWE. A he drops the end bomb in a private conversation. Whoosh! He's gone. There's yeah. no history. Yeah. All of a sudden, Andre the Giant's <laughs> Giant tripping in WrestleMania or whatever. Yeah, tri- trips and, WrestleMania he's not taking three. a bat- body Why slam. is he in the ring by himself? Yeah, it's yeah. weird. <laughs> but Shiki's the last. Shiki. Shiki. Yeah. Shiki's still around. Shiki's still there, Shiki's man. Shiki's still there, baby. Who would have thought Shiki would be the last one that Sally would have. Sully Bubble. Sully Bubble. Fuck him in the ass. Uh, humble. I humble. humble you. I humble you. You fucking jabroni. <laughs> we love you, Shiki. We um, used to take care of Shiki, too. I know. So. 
But I, again, I I want him to be. I'd love him to be exonerated of the charges. But at the end of the day, I don't even think he's competent to stand trial. I don't think he'll even make it to trial. No. The the trial's supposed to start on September twenty first. Good luck with that. I'm sure there will be motions on his. Uh, oh yeah, that's not, yeah. Going, he is not ready for trial. And that's that. He's yeah. not. Let's say. Let's say he's not mentally competent to stand trial. He's probably not. He's physically, physically not. He's no. physically not ready to he, stand he, trial. He's no, the man's got a feeding tube in his stomach. I they mean, wheeled you know, him in for his arraignment, which Carol drove them to. Yeah, he was, he was not never arrested. fucking arrested at his house. He was never arrested. Which is thank you, Bill Apter, for coming out and clarifying that. I know people started picking on you about the wording and the semantics of how you said it. But what you said, brother, was the truth. And thank you for standing yeah. with the family and standing with Jimmy. The, the cops never went to go get Jimmy. That never happened. No. she Carol drove, his wife Carol, drove him down into Allentown. They turned themselves in. They did the arraignment then and there. They said, this is what your bail will be. And bail was posted ASAP. As in, they knew it was coming. He did not sit in a fucking jail cell. No. There, that would be inhumane to stick a man in a wheelchair with a feeding tube in a jail cell. So there's a lot of conflicting stuff between fucking TMZ, that piece of shit, it, brag. <laughs> really? Let's let's all jump on something before we know the facts, shall we? Well, that's TMZ. I mean, they're sensational. They're the Inquirer, but for TV. Yeah. When the myth becomes truth, you print the myth. Yes. But yeah. it's just please, people, if if you really do believe that Jimmy is innocent, which in my heart I know he is, um, we do have a thing on Facebook which we will add to the end of this podcast, and it's a, a page for support Jimmy Snuka. And just, you know, show the bra that you love him and that you support him. If you've got pictures of him and you together, post those. Post any memories that you may have from meeting him. And just show him that you love him and and are there and support him, please. Because he really, really needs to see that there are people that do care and that he has not been abandoned by his fans like the WWE has just pushed him aside like he was a piece of trash. Well, um, And as of... From now on, which will make my part in this podcast a bit difficult, but I will no longer be watching or endorsing anything via WWE. That is my personal choice. I will read up on things, but I will not read it. I will not endorse their fucking sh- uh, uh, what do you call it? They're not, you know, their their internet thing or or any pay per view. Uh, that's just me. I will be able to keep up with discussions, but I will not watch it per se. All right, so there is one question that I want to ask you, and unfortunately, it's the ugly question. Am I going to have to punch you afterwards? You might. <laughs> there, you know, it's it's an ugly question, but as the host, I'm forced to ask it. <clears throat> what if he's guilty? Um. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. We will never make it that far. Um. Yeah. And that's my answer. We will never make it that far in the trial. Okay. Because they're not going to find him guilty because it's all circumstantial evidence. It is truly all circumstantial evidence, and it got pushed through because this prosecutor wants to get reelected. And, and that's that. And that's the oh, thing. And it's wait, like wait, the wait, grandeur- wait, wait. The other thing, let's, let's go back 20, you know, 32 years to when the first thing happened, okay? Apparently, there's a rumor that has been put up on the internet that uh, Vince... McMahon, and the prosecutor at the time, who is now the had a little state, agreement. had this, who is now currently the state district judge yeah. for Lehigh Valley. Okay, prosecutor now, the judge. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, there was a backdoor deal between Vince and the certain prosecutor. That's the rumor. That's another rumor. That's the rumor. Okay. So, why um, aren't we going after that judge? For taking a bribe, if this was really what it was supposed to have been back then. Is there a big enough broom to <laughs> brush Vince McMahon it's, away it's, from WWE? It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. I'm going okay? by the autopsy report, which proves sure. a lot. And yeah. again, whoever went back and looked at this autopsy report is like, yeah, I'm going to help you get elected. I'll just write homicide on it. It's that simple. Yeah. I'm it, just it, trying to think of what it would be like if they tried to erase Vince McMahon from the history of WWE. It just, WWE just, just existed. Like, how God. often do you hear about Senior? Well, I'm just saying. He's like, been pretty much erased so, from so it, and Senior, he built it. So Senior would have had it 
And then all of a sudden, sudden it was there. And then it was there. And then it was just there. Yeah. And something happened. And then now we Here's have... Here's the thing. And yeah. to being realistic, you're not going to get Vince McMahon. No, I'm not it's asking not them happen. to go after Vince McMahon. Right. But I'm just saying, there's a lot more that they need to dig into. If you're going to just take the, the word of five witnesses, which were EMTs and hospital workers, not anybody who was actually there on the scene. And that's what's difficult, right? Is that... Again, nobody knows what happened except Jimmy and Nance. Nobody knows. Every, we can believe Jimmy, but the only okay, thing, but that, nobody actually knows. But even through his dementia, yeah. the one thing that has never changed is the version that he has told me. Well, sure. And Strangler and a fuck ton of other people throughout the last 32 years. If you were to try to sit and ask him now, I don't know if he'd yeah. be able to remember much of it yeah. other than it was a very sad thing. And he never likes to talk about sad things. Yeah. He's, he, he can't handle... He was never one to be able to handle harsh... Deep emotions. Motion, yeah. yeah, emotional stuff. He He's very much like an Irishman when it comes to emotional stuff. He holds it, he holds it, he holds it, and yeah. then... Boom, he'll explode. You know, it, it would be a weird company because it would be like... <laughs> oh, we're oh, back on the Vince thing. Well, okay, yeah, no, that's If cool. you think about it. it. I mean, think because I'm sitting there, I'm letting you do your thing, and I'm just thinking about it. WWE would be a weird, weird company because all of a sudden, like, two children would just appear out of nowhere and just start working with the company. Like, you know, Stephanie and uh, Stephanie and Shane would just be like two it's kids just that just Steph. showed up. Fucking right? Cabbage Patch kids. Well, it's, yeah, not even just, that. it's not even Shane anymore. It's just Steph. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, back, if you go through the history, yeah, right. all of a sudden, like, and Shane trips. McMahon gets angry for no apparent reason. Reason and just shows up, and everybody's like, "Oh, okay, I'm a, I'm fine with like a you know like a late teenager showing up being a ref." Like, there, it's just weird. Like, if you take Miss McGann and you, you do the Crispin Wabroom, now he's gone. Yeah, yeah that's well, that becomes a weird company. You're never gonna get Vince. You never. You, that's not gonna happen. And you never. You're not gonna get the judge either. No, but it's okay. just it's certain things. There are if you're, rumors, gonna, if you're you know, gonna do certain things, if you're gonna go after one part of it, go after the entire part of it. Don't just pick and choose what you want to prosecute. Um. But any any grand any jury with a, with a real mind and a, you know they're gonna look at this whole case and go, why did you waste everybody's time? Well, that's I, the thing. I do in my heart of hearts and in my psychic yeah. heart. They're not going to find him good, guilty. Good, good, good. The grand jury's job is to say, "Yeah, you can you can go to trial." That's the grand jury's job. Is that yeah? And it also you, took this guy a year. Yeah, a year. So to try to get this case together, and it had been thrown out several times. So I don't think he just found the right people to say yes. Yeah, I That's don't. All. I don't think that there is enough evidence to convict. There's not. Okay? It would be just random happenings, like WrestleMania just happens. You know, I'm just really just fucking thinking about it. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, the uh, you, you know, like I said, there, there, I don't think there's enough evidence to convict. I don't think there's enough evidence, um, you know, even to to convict on the lower charge. Yeah, involuntary manslaughter is yeah. a lot different than third degree murder, which means murder with malice. Okay. Uh, third degree is murder of passion. No, right? No. It's murder with with malice. You just you, had it up on the thing. Did I? Oh, yeah. All right. Hold on. Third Revamping. degree. Now murder. would be a perfect time to talk about things that Vince McMahon would be yeah. like. Voluntary manslaughter, also okay. known as third degree murder, is sometimes called a crime of passion, as any intentional killing that involves no prior intent. But meant with malice. But uh, could cause a reasonable person to become emotionally or mentally disturbed. Yeah, so basically, you're so mad so, that you, you go to hurt somebody, but there's no intent but to But do kill. you see how the, the media turned it? Third degree murder. Yeah. Not voluntary manslaughter or involuntary manslaughter. Yeah. If they would have gone after them with that wording, it would have been a totally different... It wouldn't have hit the boards and the news media as it did... But no, when you get third degree murder, yeah. it's kind of like when me and my ex husband, my hu- my ex husband does the most beautiful sword work next to Gil Hibben. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were living in Garfield for the shortest of shortest times, and somehow I guess a neighbor of ours didn't like us very much, and somehow had CBS News do an undercover story on us without us even knowing it was happening. Yeah. I remember So this. one day we have a news crew show up at our door and ask to do a news piece on us. And my husband's like, oh, cool. Somebody actually likes my stuff. All right, here, let me show you what we have. Later that night, the 11 o'clock news, death for sale. 
We were selling swords and knives to children and this, that, and the other. When we lived eight blocks away. And my, my, and my ex, we made sure everybody was 18 and over whenever they either touched a knife or bought a knife yeah. or a blade. Well, Lakata knives, by the way. The, the, the best part about that is they talked about Steve like they he, like he was handing out knives and swords to children for like Halloween. Yeah, like right? he was Santa Claus. And because you were there through the whole thing oh, too. And, so. and, and what happened? And when they did a panoramic to the school, like look how close he is to the Garfield High School. Okay, that's great. When they did the panoramic shot, the back was to the back. They were right across the street. From yeah. the, the high school, which yeah. means their back was, was right to the against. gun shop across the street. <laughs> their back was to the gun shop. Was leaning on the building of the gun shop across the street from the Garfield High School. But yet we had because whoever it was really wanted us out of that yeah, neighborhood. They, they didn't we were want there for there. all of four months, and it was issues with housing. Then we were told we didn't have a, a housing permit, which was something that the landlord was supposed to take care of, and it was just uh, it was just hell. It was hell. But again, it's how people spin it. It's how it's worded. And yeah. that's what really, really bothered me the day that this hit. One, it was the day before my birthday. And two, it's like they turned him into such a monster. And it's like that is not who that man is. He is the most sweetest, kindest, caring, loving, would give you the shirt off his back. And <laughs> actually... as a friend of mine said once, he would give away. The last quarter, if he had a dime. Yeah. Okay? That's... So, to go after him like this... And and the other thing that really aggravated me about that is fucking internet trolls who know nothing about anything, but we're just going to put our our opinion in. Well, internet trolls... And, oh, yeah, we should hang them. We should, you know, this, that, and the other. Internet trolls... And it's their their job to get people up and pissed. I've told to Krim, like, they're playing a different game. You're you're about this. You're talking about this, and they're playing a completely different game. Their aim is to get your fucking Irish up and all that shit, and they're very very good at it. Okay, so, but uh, you know, I can see Crims actually right now looking to see if he can find it. You can see all the ad, all the things yeah, that came up on yeah. forums you know, talking people, about like you know coming. To no, they TV took down the story. They no, did, but you can still find it. You can uh, still I'd find to, it somewhere. It's tough. You got to look for I, archives. I know, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, but. Steve and I have never watched. It's not worth watching. That clip. Because we knew if we did, we'd go ballistic. So we, we, yeah. we just stayed away from it. But I understand what it's like to be in that type of... I mean, it's not to the degree of scandal yeah. that Snooka is dealing with. But, I mean, we had to uproot our lives and, like, pretty much leave the state for our child's sake because we didn't know what was going to happen because of this news report. And we went mm. into hiding for about two weeks. And if it wasn't for the love of Gil Hibben and his wife who sent their lawyer after her for us on our behalf, we didn't even have to do anything. They're like, go after him. So Gil Hibben's lawyer went after CBS with a cease and desist. Wow. And, and, it, and they and took it, it went down. Away. Yeah, and it, it, went, it went away. Yeah, it Very went away. Very quickly. So but, I'm hoping all this will yeah, go ho- away yeah. for Jimmy Here's once thing, again. Okay? And and I, I, want to, I want people to understand I'm not necessarily playing devil's advocate. Okay? Yes, you are. But that's your job. <laughs> it's your job. It's your job is the host, man. You know, I, 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 I still I love want, you. I want Jimmy to be exonerated. I want him to be back in the Hall of Fame. I want him to live the rest of his life peaceful and comfortable and not have to worry about this. Yeah, I want to go camping okay? with the bra. I want you to know. take him to baseball games. I want to do family things with him and... The stress of this, I don't, I don't know what it's going to do, and that's what scares yeah. me the most. Because after 15 years of us being apart, and then finally, you know, putting the past behind us to just come into the thing with him having this horrible cancer, and now this, it's like to come back into his life just to say goodbye. It's not fair, and this is bullshit. And I just keep praying every day especially from a pagan <laughs> i i do put out there that i i hope that universe will you know make it stop and and that he can live out the rest of his life peacefully and happily and with his family and and fans and friends yeah. and do i think that this will change anything as far as his contract with wwe no i think i think vince will use this as a reason or the corporate or whoever made the decision um, i don't think it'll i don't think he'll ever make it back in 
And I think that, out of everything, is probably what hurts him the most, yeah. is that something that he spent his entire life, and I do mean almost his entire life, doing as a living, has now been ripped out from under him. Yeah. I I hope, um, you know, that, you know, like I said, I want... I, if he gets convicted, he's never getting back. But I don't think he'll be convicted. I think he'll... If the char- Honestly, the, I think the charges will be dropped because there's not enough evidence. I hope he sits there. I, I hope they go to trial for one day and the judge is like, why yeah, are you ju- wasting why are all we of here? our time? Why are we here? Look at the man. Yeah. Why are we here? But Because somebody wants to make a name for themselves. That's why. But that's the purpose of a trial, to get to the point of the truth. Okay. I mean, it's not like he's O.J., yeah, you know, I, and that's what if they're the making it out. If the don't fit, you must quit. And that's how they're making it seem like he's fucking OJ. Yeah, I know. And it's not. It's in. It's either voluntary or involuntary manslaughter, and it's absolutely neither of the two. But the man can't remember. It couldn't possibly happen in September. <laughs> I'm trying. Like that's I'm good. trying. That's to good. Come, you got nothing, man. I look. I'm letting you guys wah, do things. Wah, I'm trying. Wah, wah. I'm trying to come up with funny, okay? And it's this not, is not a it's funny just, situation. It's not. It's but but look, I'm, t- I'm telling you, if you think of Vince McMahon not being stop. in... No, it's it's hysterical. Like I said, like all of a sudden there's a corporate corporate corporation ministry. But no, there's no corporate to it. It's well, just guys getting it's, together. It's like the picture that Strangler sent me the other day on Facebook where, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden... You know, Roddy's hitting something that's with invisible coconut. with a coconut. It's like, what are you going to do that? He's freaking out. You know, Roddy, 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 he's freaking out. Just he's, like, ghosts! And just he's, fucking he's, wicks out. He and just starts to swat, swat, swat a ghost with a coconut. There was also the other one that I, I sent him. It's the $3. There's Andre and um, Macho Man and, and uh, Hogan and yeah. a few others and Shiki and Jimmy. And it, above Cheeky's head, it says a bubble. Who would have thought I'd be the last one with yeah. a Legends contract? <laughs> yeah, Cheeky's looking around like, man, yeah, me? <laughs> like, really me? What have me? Yeah. I'm gonna just stay home. Who yeah. would have thought? Yeah, me, Cheeky Bubba. But um, I think we'll we'll cut it there for that week for this week. Well, do we me. want? To, well, we do have a show. Oh, yes. I don't. I don't know if. I hopefully this will go up today. I don't know if it is or not. I don't know if I'll. Uh, I mean, I'll try to get it up before the show goes on. But it, all right. I mean, so, do we even mention the show we're going to be at today? Yeah. I mean, if it's not going to make it up today, I mean, well, you can. Okay. Well, we if, won. If you, <laughs> for those of you going to be listening on Thursday, we won. <laughs> we did. Spoiler. Spoilers. Future. Spoiler. Future spoiler. Future the high spot. Um. We don't do that no and, more. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> the, as I keep saying, there there is going to be the one time appearance of Countess Noir. Yes, she's going to be walking out with uh, Timothy Plasma tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, the show in Hazelton at the Harwood Fire Department starts at four o'clock. Bring your own chairs, peeps. Didn't know that until last night. <laughs> Bring your own chairs. Whoopsie doopsies. It's an outdoor show. It's on a it's on a ball field. <laughs> Welcome to the Indies, my friends. But I'm pushing the hell out of this show because it's done. It's, it's been put on by my bestie Tasha, and uh, we've been doing the best we can to get the word out for her. And uh, I really hope to see a lot of our our faithful out there today. Because uh, I think, who, do we know what match we're doing yet, or no? No, it's a uh, luck of the it's draw. A, it's a luck of the draw. So basically, it's kind of a spin the wheel of morality, but yeah. it could be in a blindfold in, match, or uh, I could be in a ladies' gown match, which I really hope I'm not. Oh, man. oh I don't know. If, if you we get have that, that uh, we need video. video. We need. Oh, that, that's hurtful. Or, <laughs> well, it's true. He's a big man. I mean, I mean, Cold he doesn't fit, he doesn't fit into a dress the way that Vito does. I mean, I mean Vito looks true. very nice in a dress. It, 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 he does look good. Shout out to Vito. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, okay. hopefully, you guys have a good match. Oh, oh just. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'll finish up, because I, I have another thought in my head about All right, Vince. We'll, no, no more. <laughs> no, wait, just, just, just no last more. one, just last one. Okay, Vince was the commentator, right? He was a play-by-play guy, yes, right? Yes, and he was awesome at it. And if he wasn't it. around, it was just Jerry Lawler being a dick, okay? He was just an asshole on the mic. Think about it. He just starts, he's just being mean all the time. It's and just somebody just, being mean, nobody to play and off And then of. there are, like, these spots of dead air. Yeah. And just then, dead air, yeah. Just dead air, and then just Jerry Lawler going, like, well, she's old. I mean, like, <laughs> this, I mean, think about it. Just take Vince McMahon, and that 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 becomes a lot of fun. And in tragedy, you must find comedy, my friends. Yes. That's what I'm here for. I bring the funny. Do you? I do. do. You? I laugh. Made you guys laugh. Do you? Do you really? That's All cool. right. 
All right, guys. So we're going to call it there for this week. Yeah, because I actually need to finish getting ready. We need to be out of here within the hour to head out to Hazleton, PA. For the show. Oh, also, we will be at the Legends of the Ring. Yes. On October 3rd. It is a Saturday. It is a one-day show. Tickets at the door, I believe, are 20 bucks. They just signed Bob Backlund to do this show. I don't think we'll get Backlund because... He's a certain type of crazy. There, there's a bit, there's yeah, something gone there. Because I was the Strangler about it last night, and he's like, yeah, there's no way in hell. Because yeah. he'll, he'll make, he'll be like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do this for you, but who was the, who were the vice presidents from this year to this year? Yeah, if I can't or, answer, yeah. And if you can't answer that, he, he won't. He used to pull that stuff with Gino Caruso when he would try to book him for ECPW, and he'd be like, uh, um... And it wasn't like we could just look it up on the internet real quick over the phone. Yeah. Nowadays you can, and you can you can work them, but no, not face-to-face. But yeah, it's it's got a great lineup. Um, it's in Monroe at the Crown Plaza Hotel. It's from 8.30 in the morning to, I believe, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then they have special dinners and other yeah. things that you can look into. It's like VIP stuff. So yeah, look up Legends of the Ring... Fan Fest, and uh, we will be there. The Blind Tag will be there. Yes. We may have a special guest or two. We're, we're working on we're some working things. We're working on it. We're we working got some on things. It. Got some things in the works got there. Got some things. We have some things to sell. But. I think Strangler said he's got some old uh, wrestling magazines and stuff you might want to, mm-hmm. you know, get rid of. So for you collectors out there, you might want to stop by our table. You yeah. know, can't miss us. No, you really can't. I'm... I'm hoping to actually have some 8x10s of the three of us done before that. The three of us? Yeah. We need to get some pictures done, man. No, Nobody wants to see a picture of me. You're a very <laughs> handsome guy. Big dick. All well, right. What so we could do is we could take a picture of three of us and then put like a big smiley face over you. <laughs> just, hey! <laughs> Fucking a big <laughs> Lego head. Man, you get a t-shirt that just says ladies love big dick. It's true. There you go. All the ladies love All the ladies love big dick. I can't even say that with a straight face. Kid, he's giggling. You see how red he's turning. Right <laughs> anyway, <now>? dick. <laughs> he said dick. He said dick. <laughs> anyway, um, but all right, guys, we're gonna leave you there. Um, good luck in your match. Thank and you. We will as for Krim and for Dante. I am Big Dick Gideon, <laughs> and we will talk to you all next week. Later. <laughs> <laughs>